the draw for us is exciting. I think to play, um, you know, a host nation, Canada's done that twice before with, you know, Brazil in the bronze medal match quarterfinals, Team GB in 2012. So I think, you know, that was the first immediate reaction for me is like, what an opening game to play. It's, it's where we want to be as coaches, as players. Um, and I, I think, you know, a relatively tough group, um, you know, a great test. I think w when you want to go and win a medal, you've got to play the best teams. And I think we've got, you know, two very good teams in our group. And then you look at a Chile, they, they're, a, they're a good side. They're hard to beat. You look at the results. They had the first feature in the World Cup and they didn't necessarily get steamrolled by top teams. So, yeah, I think that that game will actually be a tough test in terms of, I can imagine, a, a hard group to break down. So, Overall, three good games um, and, and excited to play to play Japan in the opening game. You know, obviously, the, the last two will give us a, a great snapshot. Straight away this morning, as a technical staff, we jumped straight on a call. It's just got everyone, I guess, more focused th than ever. You know, we're, we're straight on to looking at the opponents, getting that broken down. But I think between now and June, our June window, where we'll have some fixtures, it's about us sort of looking at that 18, tracking them, week in, week out in, in club, you know, seeing how fit the group are. I think that's a huge consideration going into the Olympics of, you know, you can imagine by that uh, Team GB game, that third game, you need players who can can go back to back to back. So I am closer, but there's definitely um, a, a group of players that I think it, it's touch and go. You've got injuries coming back in. So June window for us will be the deciding sort of window. Um, to finalise that that roster, but I definitely think the week in week out performances in, in club and, and and even college is, is going to help us narrow that down even more. So here is the group Canada will be in at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. And yes, you heard Bev Priestman say they'll play their first game against Japan, the host nation. That'll be on July 21st, two days before the opening ceremony. Also in that group, Great Britain and Chile ranked 37th, Canada ranked 8th. If we were to take a guess at Great Britain, who will have Wales and Scotland mixed in there. If you go by the England side, which we speculate will make up the majority of that roster, they're ranked 6th in the world. Um, Ollie, what do you think of this draw for Canada? Uh, it's, a, it's a good draw if you like a challenge because I think it's tough. I, I don't think there are any easy games in there. Um, I think obviously people will look at Chile being 37th in the world and think that should be should be three points, but they're not an easy team to beat, like Bev Priestman was, was just saying there. And those kind of, kinds of matchups, as we saw against Argentina at the She Believes Cup, I don't think they're, they're well suited to Canada when you got to break down those very stubborn defenses. So that, that will be a challenge, I think. Japan, obviously, a very good side. World Cup winners in, in 2011, finalists again in 2015. Um, I don't think they've had the best couple of years, and they've dropped down a bit in the world rankings, but they did beat Canada 4-0. Um, after the last World Cup, so they were certainly in a better state than Canada then. Hopefully that's now changing under Bev Priestman. And then, and then Great Britain, obviously, you, you, you do look at that England result um, just in the last window, obviously, and that gives you a lot of optimism about what Canada might be able to do in that matchup. It will be, as you said, I think a majority English team with, with maybe a couple of players from Scotland and, and Wales. Um, so certainly you feel a bit of renewed optimism. I, I, as I've said before, I, I thought meddling at this, this Olympics looked like a real long shot for Canada before Bev Priestman took over. I would have thought that matchups like Japan and, and GB would have been very difficult before Bev Priestman took over. Now you're feeling a bit more optimism that Canada can get results in, in these kinds of games. Hard to predict, I know, but Gareth, are the Canadians considered favourites? I don't think so, but I'll tell you what, they should hope that they go on and win the group because if they don't, the road to winning a medal is that much more difficult. A second place in the group means that they'll face likely Netherlands or Brazil in the first round of the knockout phase. That's a difficult game no matter what. If you finish third, you end up relegated to a position where you're playing the winner from Group G. Like the United States, that Group G, though, is locked and loaded. So if you want to avoid those two matchups and potentially get a more preferential one in the first knockout game, you better go on and win this group. And I'm not sure that they are. I mean, look, that was a young England side that we saw that, the, that we saw them beat in a friendly. It was just a friendly. It wasn't a competitive match. Japan... 
they've been losing a lot of close games. Ollie touched on it that they haven't come away with a lot of results over the last few years, but they played good competitions and they played them competitively throughout. Now, they won't have a home field advantage where it doesn't sound like there'll be any fans in the crowd, so I'm not sure how much we can take of Canada you know, winning in Brazil or winning in England against Great Britain in 2012. I'm not sure if we can look back on that and, and, and think the same or think these situations are similar, but it's going to be a tough road no matter what. And I'll tell you what, that Chile game, based upon how equal those teams might be fighting for first place, that could be the deciding match. How you fare against the worst team in the group, if you're able to punish them, put some goals past them, something that Canada has struggled to do at times, like we saw against Argentina at She Believes, then they could be in tough. So I think that game is going to be critical in the way that the group ends up playing out. Yeah, every game is going to be a big one. You know, I, I know it, it, it's t t tempting to feel like you know, two, the two best third place finishes go through. So there's a bit of a safety net there and not be too worried about Canada in this group. Um, but like Will said, you do not want to finish third. You don't want to ha have that kind of draw and, and have that kind of opponent um, in the first knockout round. So every game is going to be really crucial. And, and again, that Chile game is, is one you have to win, I think, to, ha to have any chance of finishing in the top two of the group. By uh, a it lot. will be a test. You it will be a game. Goals possibly by yeah to get the goal difference up and it's it will be challenging again like we saw against Argentina those are the kinds of games as much as we want to see Canada fare better against the top opponents because that was a big problem under Kenneth Heine Muller we also need to see them be more clinical create more chances when they're playing against those weaker opponents but weaker opponents that are very very stubborn defensively so that's something that I, I imagine they'll have a friendly before the before the Olympics that will be designed uh, for that purpose because that's going to be really crucial yeah, so reiterate, the top two in each group automatically advance to the knockout stage, and then it's the top two third-place finishers. So Canada, of course, wanting to finish top in their groups. Um, Ollie, let's take a look at your projected 18-player uh, roster here for Canada. Good news, by the way, is Christine St. Clair did play with our NWSL side Portland on Wednesday night because we know she uh, had to leave that last friendly for Canada or two friendlies ago against Wales uh, with that foot injury. But how is it looking here? Yeah, no changes since we, we last showed you, obviously, but still I think the same kind of debates, really. Um, the good news is, is that Kaylin Sheridan and Adriana Leon um, will, will probably be back for the June camp from their injury, so they're going to get a chance to potentially play their way back into the picture. It doesn't sound so good for Diana Matheson, which is will be really disappointing if, if she can't make it, because I do think um, even in, in the latter stages of her career now that she can add something that this kind of the team is maybe missing. And then the big, I think, talking point and debate going into that June window when Beth Priestman will finalize this roster is the striking situation. It's okay, Sinclair goes. I think Nichelle Prince definitely goes because she can play wide or up top. And then the question is, who else goes? Can you take two more strikers and take Evelyn Vienne and Jordan Heitemar, or do you have to choose between the two on, on this 18-player roster? Um, Vienne has been getting the job done for, for her country and now also for her club, as we saw in the NWSL this week. Um, I think Jordan Heitema really needs to have a big showing in, in June to, to stake her claim here because uh, as I've got on this roster, she may be on the outside looking in at the minute. 